Good evening, Rabbi A few things I want to talk about a little about uh, the laws of Tefillin. These are little things that a lot of people don't know, these halachot, so much. Even the rabbis sometimes don't know these things, you know. Uh, you have to, if you don't learn them carefully, the Shulchan Ruch and the Bet Yosef, you're not going to really understand what, uh, what, what's the proper thing to do. So what I'm talking about is like this, you know. First of all, when a person puts on Tefillin, <coughs> it says in the Shulchan Ruch that he has to all the time grope them, you know, all the time, feel them like this. Why? What's the reason why you shouldn't feel them like this all the time? There's number one, number one issue is like this, you know, that when a person has tefillin on, he has to be very careful about the kedusha of his mind, of the kedusha of his body. You know, so he has to constantly remind himself that the tefillin is on his body, so he shouldn't forget. This is the reason why, you know? So, uh, because there are certain things that a person cannot do when he's wearing tefillin. For instance, you know, to have bad thoughts, you know, all kinds of things, thinking about this, thinking about women, all kinds of, all kinds of things like this. Not allowed to do that. So you have to be able to control your mind, you know, make, make sure your thoughts are, are pure. You should know, by the way, that uh, the custom by, by the Sfarim is that even though uh, many of us put Rabbi Tam, Tam, but the custom is they don't put it until they get married. Uh, you know, Rabbi Tam. What's the reason for this? Uh, why, don't they, why don't they put it until they get married? So they write in the Paschim, the reason is because of Hirhurim. Maybe he's going to have some bad thoughts. And he's going to be wearing Rabbi Tam. He's not married yet. So he has all kinds of Thoughts in his head, you know, thinking about this, thinking about that. So because of that, we're afraid that it's going to have the bad thoughts. So what about Tfilin of Rashi? What difference does it make, right? Because it's the Rabbi Tam Rashi. According to Kabbalah, the Tfilin of Rabbi Tam is on a higher level. It's more, it's more Kadosh. You know what I mean? So there you have to be even more careful not to have bad thoughts. And this is the reason why we tell the Bahurim, you know, wait till you get married and then you'll put Rabbi Tam. Uh, no, it's not the right time for you. This is how it was also in the house of Maran, Rabbi 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 uh, he used to, what he used to do was when his sons got married, his sons told me, you know, when they would get married, what would he give them as a wedding present? Uh, not a toaster, you know, or some kind of, uh, you know, dishes, you know, silverware, not things like this. He would give them Tfilin Rabbeinu Tam. This was the present, you know, for all his sons. And they would get married, and they would tell them, okay, now you get Rabbeinu Tam. Oh, now you put, Baruch Hashem. You're married, everything is good. This is the way it should be, you know? So, why am I telling you this? Because person, you see from there for how careful you have to be not to have bad thoughts when you're wearing tefillin. You know, you got to be careful. And this is the reason why a person has to always feel the tefillin. Constantly, you know. By the way, there are also some things which are taught in the Talmud, in the Shonim, that this is not halakha today. We don't do these things today. You know what it is? There's an opinion like this, brought down in Rashi and also in Tosfot. But down there, that when you grope the tefillin, not only you have to grope the tefillin, but every time you grope the tefillin, you have to make a bracha. You ever hear such a thing like this? Can you imagine? Let's say he groped it a hundred times, right? Let's see, he's wearing it for two hours, I don't know. He has to make a hundred brachot. According to this shita. We don't do that very like today. today. What's the bracha that he has to make? Right? Uh, this is the bracha. Are you ready for this? Baruch atah Hashem, Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, Hashem, 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 What does that mean? He commanded us to, to, to guard his, his laws, his statutes. Why do we make this bracha? What's the, what's the idea? Because every time you grope the tefillin, you're guarding the laws of Hashem. Because it says in the halakha, you have, to, you, have to, you have to grope it all the time. So every time, and this is the reason why they used to bless like this. Also, there was another bracha they used to do in Eretz Israel, in the old times, the times of the Talmud. Also today we don't do this. You know what it is? Uh, to, when they take off the tefillin, they also make a bracha. Can you imagine? When they take it off, also bracha. We don't do this today, right? Why they do that? What's the reason why? And what's the bracha they made, by the way? So the, the bracha is like this, right? Baruch Atah Hashem, Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, Hashem Kedeshenu B'Mitzvotah B'Tzivanu, L'Chalot Tefillin, to take off the Tefillin. He commanded us to take it off. Who commanded you to take off the Tefillin? What are you talking about? Right? So you know what the answer is? The answer is at night, we're commanded to take it off. At night, you're not allowed to wear Tefillin. Just like now, right? Now it's already Shkia. You know, almost in the Kochavim. That's it. Now you, know, you have to take off the Tefillin. If you're wearing Tefillin, you got to take it off. In those days, they used to wear Tefillin all day. You know, so they used to make the bracha. Lachalot tefillin, the command to take off the tefillin when it's night. Just, today we don't do that. Right, this is so two things that we don't do today. But in those days there was customs like this also going around. Okay, that's interesting. But uh, also I'm going to tell you two more things. We'll stop here. I'm going to tell you also that it happens sometimes, you know, you put the tefillin in the right place. And it has to be in the right place, right? As we talked about, you know, over there, right? We, uh, my friend knows. We talked about this, you know. So where is the right place for the tefillin? It has to be on the bicep, the muscle. 
on the lower half, not the upper half, the lower half. So you divide like 50-50, right? The bicep has to be on the lower side. If it's on the upper side, Shulchan Ruch says it's pasul. The top of the tefillin box or the bottom has to be on the bottom half? The whole tefillin has to be on the bottom. The whole tefillin. Titora, everything, right? The whole thing. Yeah. So that's why you shouldn't make the tefillin too big, you know? Because if you make it so big, it's not going to fit so like this, you know? It's too, lar- too large, you know? That's why some communities have a custom to make very large tefillin. It's not necessary to do that. There's no reason to make it so large. You know, there's a, make it like normal size, you know, something normal. It doesn't have to be so large. But anyway, that's the, that's the place of the tefillin of the, of the Yad. What about the Rosh? It has to be, right, above the hairline, where the hairline used to be. You know, if, you, if a person still has his hair, right? If he doesn't have his hair, so where it used to be. You know, he has to put it above that, right? Make sure it's not on your forehead. If it's here on your forehead, we talked about this before. Pasul. He didn't fulfill his obligation. Even a little bit. It's on your forehead. A little bit. Pasul. No good. So you know what that means? It's like he, he had it in his pocket, you know? He never put it on. Can you imagine? So this is the way it is with halakha. You know, it's feeling. You have to be very careful where you put the feeling. But, what I'm telling you is like this, right? That, let's say the feeling happens all the time to everybody. You know, we're not hum- we're humans. You know, we're not angels, you know? We're not, we're not angels, right? It happens to us all the time. Tefillin goes out of its place. It gets misplaced. Sometimes you move around. You shift your body, you know, this. And it moves uh, the feeling also. When you move your, sometimes you move your neck like this, you know? Like this. You shake around, you know? Uh, the feeling goes off the place. It happens all the time, right? These kinds of things. So now the question is like this, right? If it went off the place, you know, let's say drop down, whatever, right? Or whatever. And it's not in the right place anymore. Now, what's halakha? Do you have to make another bracha uh, if it left the place of the, that it's supposed to be in? So the answer is yes. It says in the Shulchan Ruch, right? The Bet Yosef, Shul Talmud, that once it leaves the place and you're putting it back, you have to make another bracha there, right? This, this is the way it is. So if your, if your shell rosh went out, you have to make now another one, right? Because you, it left the place. Why is that, by the way? Because when it goes out of the place, you don't notice, you know? So it's like I have sick. It's interruption, you know? So once it, you don't notice, it's an interruption. So that means now you lost track. You lost, you lost your frame of mind with that. So therefore, you need to make another bracha. This is the thing, you know? So that's, that's for sure. Also, the same thing with the rosh, sharosh, right? What happens if it goes out of its place, right? Then it's in the wrong place altogether. It's in the left side, right side, or too much down on the forehead, as we said, right? on the metzach. So what goes on over there? What bracha are you going to make over there? Right? So the Sfardim, we do, uh, right, the, we, uh, we do only one bracha for tefillin. The Ashkenazim, they do two, right? So for us, if it goes out of its place, we make one bracha for the Shel Rosh. The Ashkenazim, they make two. You know, so if the, if the Shel Rosh goes out of its place, they're going to put, they're going to say, Lehan Yech tefillin, and also Al Mitzvah tefillin, two brachos. You know, this is the, the, this custom of the Ashkenazim. We don't do like that, Baruch Hashem. We have different custom, you know? Everybody should do a point to the minhag. That's, that's the way it is. It's also the same thing, you know, when you put tefillin in the morning, right, when you get up and this and that, the shariyad, you have to put when you're sitting, not when you're standing, right, according to Sephardi custom. Right? Don't put it when you're standing. This is your Ashkenazi, what happened? Right? You, you change your customs? Uh, Sephardi, the custom is to put tefillin when you sit. That's tefillin shariyad. And then for the shorosh, you get up and you, you put shorosh when you're standing. This is the, uh, according to the riff and the rambam, this is the way it is, you know? So a person has to know, right, his customs. Another thing, right, which is similar to that is, let's say, for instance, a person took off the tefillin, you know, uh, and he wants to put it back on. Let's say right away. Right away, he wants to put it back. For a second, he wants to take it off and then put it right back on. No interruption. So what's the halakha? According to Ma'an Shulchan you have to bless again. Same thing. According to Ramah, no, they don't bless again. Right? And most of the achronim, Seem to agree with the Ramah. So therefore, you know, because of Sapek Brachot Lakel, because of the doubtful blessing, that it may be blessing in vain, so therefore now the custom is by most people that when they take it off to put it back on immediately, they don't make another Racha, like the Ramah, even though we're, we're Sfardi. But uh, because of Sapek Brachot Lakel, this is the reason why. But whoever does like Maran, that he wants to make another Racha, for sure he has what to rely on, right? Lomas Vichimoto. That's what the Chidah says, right? A person who wants to do like Maran, Sfardi, you know, you can do like a man. No, no, no. It doesn't, even even the, even the Achronim argue with him. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no problem with that. But says the Mishnah Brewer something interesting. Says Mishnah Brewer, okay, when it comes to when when it comes to you know he wants to put it right back on. He did it on purpose, you know, but he wants to put it right back. 
So there, it says, the Rama says not to make another bracha. But, says the Mishnah Brewer, but if you want to take it off, you know, and not put it right back on, let's say you want to do something now, you know, uh, let's say he wants to make, uh, right, he wants to eat something, you know, he, whatever. He wants to have some cookies, you know, mezonot. He wants to eat some mezonot, or, or go outside, you know, whatever, talk on the phone with somebody, do some, you know, transactions, you know, check his bank account, I don't know, whatever it is, right? He wants to go do have sex. So there, if he comes back to put tefillin again, he has to make a bracha. So the Mishnah Brewer, even according to the Ramah, because the Ramah is only talking about a case where he wants to put it right back on. But if he's going to do something which makes have sex, a different activity, so there, he has to put the tefillin with a bracha. That's what it says in the Mishnah Brewer. According to everybody, it's like that. And even though, even though, since his intention was to, to do something else, even though he put it right back on, says the Mishnah Brewer, he still has to make another bracha. Baruch <laughs>